So I was asked to create a video on how to set up a comment bank in, uh, in Compass. So first of all, we've got to go to Compass and um, uh, it's best to do these from scratch because then you can, you know, follow along or, you know, pause as you go as needed. So we go into Compass. to our compass page and uh, you know this is today's compass page and where we need to go is of course to down here which is comment bank editor now mine mine looks like this uh, we can see that our school-wide comment bank is uh, blank and uh, we don't have access to be able to create our school wide uh, any um, comments in the school wide comment comment bank. Um, I started out in my one setting up a few, uh, you know, uh, I've only done semester two, uh, which is when last year I started working on developing comment banks uh, for each of my subjects. Um, uh, initially, I started off with just general attribute comments, um, which were developed by our, um, our TAS faculty. And then I had things like um, closing statements and opening statements, which I put in. And then I started to realize that um, I, I wanted to look at full length comments and modify them as I went and, um, you know, develop them as we go based on subjects and things like that. So it's up to you how you set up your um, your comment banks. Um, it's a simple case of just adding either, you can add a folder, for example, if we wanted to start off with um, semester one comments, right? And then inside there, I would probably start then putting in things like semester one, stage four, comments and you know and then add uh, the next one which would be you know, semester semester one stage five comments it's entirely up to you how you do that um, it's just a simple adding in the folder which is clicking on that one or you can remove it or adding in um, the actual comment list now what that means is in here we would have we would start adding in some comments into this one and um, you know the bigger the better uh, I'll give you an example I have um, a folder in my stuff which I have reports and I'm not going to open them up because they've got students names in them but these are I, I keep all my um, comments and from that, I can then go and develop them. Um, and certainly, I honestly believe in a personalized comment, uh, but sometimes you need uh, just maybe some inspiration or just some help in starting one off, and um, and then you can add to it or remove things as, as you go. Um, also, I've found that these comments are a bit big when you add them into the um, when you're writing your comments, the character, the amount of characters is a lot less than what these ones are. So if I add one of these, I know that I'm going to have to um, modify it or fix it up so that it fits. Uh, or if I do things like general comments, I can add those in and keep an eye on them. Now, how do you do it? Well, it's pretty simple. You can simply just get already pre-made comments. Um, or you can make your own. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just quickly make one. So let's say I go um, uh, name is a welcome member of our class. Right. Um, uh, he is um, often courteous. Right and. Yeah, I'm just going to do that, All right? So then right, my comment is like that. And now if you if you go down here, you can see that there are student and gender specific placeholders. So what they've done is 
um, they've set it up to say, okay, this is what first name looks like. Um, and coding in coding language, those things are called curly braces and they are uh, shift uh, square bracket. So if I wanted to, I could type that in. So I could say uh, insert shift curly brace and I could say, oh, I've forgotten already what it looks like. It's just first name like that and then close off the curly brace like that. Um, so when this comment is added into a comment, it will come up and it'll look at, the program will look at the name of the child and it will put that name in. And that's pretty obvious, so uh, it's not, not that hard. Um, now with this one, it's you're not sure whether it's a female or male. So there's one here. Now you can, you can copy these, All right? So if you go, highlight it and press control C. You can then go to this comment by double clicking on it, highlighting that and pressing control V and you can copy that in. Now, um, you can imagine how long, you know, these are my stage five comments and you can imagine how long it took for me to edit these um, comments and put all of those uh, statements in. Here's a sta these ones are the stage um, full length ones for stage six, but I haven't edited those and so it would mean having to go to you know this one and then saying um, uh, Where's he or she and there's not one there of course there isn't but her there's her and that would mean that we would go down here To this one and say his her and then there's he she him her So you gotta be very careful with what you actually say uh, or what you put in there so uh, that's why I haven't done those stage six ones because I made this year's stage six ones very personal and that's why I've just created that. So I hope that helps in setting up uh, your report comments. Um, over time, they would certainly build into a huge database of different types of comments that you could have um, for each of your stages or even... Um, same stage, different subjects. So if you wanted to, you could call this one, you know, stage four, uh, I teach digital tech. So this could be digital tech. Um, and then stage five, I have two different stage five. So I have, uh, for example, year nine IST, but then I also have year 10 IST. And then um, I then have year 11 software design this year in semester one and year 12 um, information process. So you can break it up that way if you wanted to. Um, the only thing I don't like is that the student and gender, the placeholders here don't have uh, subject. And it, it wouldn't be too hard to actually get it to um, have the subject. So if you want to talk about the subject or even if, the, if you want to talk about the topic, you could put those in, but it, it doesn't do that. So this is where we're at at the moment. Um, it certainly streamlines the process of report comment writing. Uh, and but in saying that, it's still I would recommend you you read over your comments, uh, possibly out loud like I do, or even have someone else have a look over them because um, it's always wise to have a second eye just to look over them to make sure that your report comments are all good. And then surprisingly, once if they are all good and they're approved and they are sent out to parents, uh, then go back into your report comments and. Um, copy and paste them into here, uh, the ones that have been approved, and that way then you can use those ones. Um, can't think of anything else I really want to show you. Uh, obviously, the next thing would be then you go into the semester reports and click on these. I'm not going to click on these because I don't want to um, show the students' names on a YouTube video, but you would then know the next thing you would do is go here, and then you're going to enter uh, your comments uh, through this, um, actually think that I've gone the wrong way, but <laughs> it might be in the progress reports where I'm going to be doing them or I'm going to, uh, I, I actually know where they are, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, hope, you, hope that helps for you guys to set up your uh, report comments. I'm not sure whether you want to do it before or whether you want to do it after you write your reports. Um, you know, it's uh, six of one, half dozen of the other really, but hope that helps.